Excellent. Um, so for my team, we're actually the um, eight o'clock group, but I'm st sitting on this one because my daughter's got cello lessons in the evenings. Um, our group consists of Joyce Lynn Kelly, Anita Stolba, Joshua Tavares Dos Santos, Matthew Nezeroski, Melanie Berrios, and myself. And the first uh, a learning object we're looking at was uh, a movie we watched called He Even Has Her Eyes, which was a movie about uh, a black couple in, I think it was France, who adopted a white baby and um, the unintended um, attitudes that they encountered between people um, as a result of that, with people, you know, assuming it wasn't their child and things like that. So for that one, we're going to talk about uh, ways that digital technology could be used to enhance people's understanding um, and acceptance of, you know, multiracial families. Um, the one I'm most involved in is the um, the museum one, where we actually, uh, because we're in uh, different locations, one of our people is out in uh, Vancouver, we decided to use the Virtual Museum of Canada, which is an organization, it's part of the uh, Canadian Museum of History, um, and basically it acts as an aggregator of Canadianists, so all different uh, libraries, uh, institutions, even you know private individuals can create uh, exhibits, and there's you know more than 500 of them, uh, but one of the problems we found with it was that a lot of the exhibits are, uh, you know, as someone mentioned before, fairly static. It's kind of you know old technology. A lot of them look like they're fairly dated. So we're going to look at ways that it could be modernized and updated, um, maybe through the use of uh, some you know uh, virtual reality. Um, and we found some examples of museums that work fairly well in this sense. Um, a lot of the art museums, like the Met and places like that, actually have high-resolution scans of art that you can zoom in on and actually view like the individual brush strokes. Um, and there's three-dimensional renderings of uh, you know old artifacts. So even if you can't get to the museum, you can log in. And it's a little limited right now in terms of you know if you're just using your laptop, you can kind of uh, you know click and drag to rotate things around and see what the objects look like. But as things get a little more advanced. Uh, with virtual reality technology and the, some of the interactive, not just gloves, but you know, just different ways they can reach in and interact with the environment, it could become a much more realistic way of seeing the different things that are in the museum. And it's a little isolating if you're kind of there on your own. Um, so we looked at some social aspects, not social in the terms of uh, you know online uh, forums and stuff, which is also a possibility, but things like along the lines of Second Life. In one of the classes I took a few uh, semesters ago, we actually had to get a Second Life account, and it becomes a much more social thing where you have an avatar, you can see the other people's avatars, and you can actually converse with them. You can, if you're you know visiting the museum in that sense, you can discuss the exhibits. Um, and with more limited technology, things like cell phones with uh, you know front-facing cameras, something along the lines of FaceTime, where if you're in that 3D environment, and rather than having a full physical avatar, it could just be uh, you know a, a basically a FaceTime screen. So you can be looking at the exhibits, but you can also see the other people that are there. Um, so we're looking at different um, technological options like that, in addition to things like uh, you know Google Hangouts or you know kind of forums where. When you're there looking at the exhibit, you can make some comments about it and people can uh, put comments back. And it can be either synchronous or asynchronous, so you can kind of go in and see what people have written in the past, or you can actually engage in conversations with them. So that's what our uh, second learning object is going to be about. Anybody have any questions?